So when the Lord, like I said, when the Lord put you through these trials, you got you to remember what is the reason why you're going through these things. Right? Because we don't know what kind of trials you're going to put you through. So there's, um, so the Hebrews, Hebrews 12, verse 5, right? Hebrews 12, verse 5, it say, And ye have forgotten the exhortation, which speaketh unto you as unto children. It say, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. If it is chastening, let's be to what? Let's be to build you up, to prepare you, and it's also be to keep you in check. Whatever way he does, he does, he does kill many birds with one stone. You know what he's saying? Let's go. You understand? There's no way to prepare you, but it's to keep you in check. Why? Because the Lord the way to be like everybody else. When everybody else want to be liberal and do what they want and make the self happy and do whatever pleasing to them, the Lord want you to stay in, to stay in order. So when that time come, you will be able to escape what they will eat. And that way you're not supposed to envy these people either. When you see they, they're free and they can do what they want and they just get away with doing wickedness. You're not supposed to envy them. Because the time coming that they are going to have an answer for that. I'll get a scripture on that quick. Right? I'll get a scripture on that quick. Right? 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 Here, give me a second. Uh, as it is, yes, take us nine. Please, yes, take us nine verse. Ecclesiastes 9 will start from 11, right? Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11 They say, Envy not the glory of a sinner, for thou knowest not what shall be his end. But we know. We know what is the end of a sinner, destruction. That is why we try not to be like them. And when it is you actually stumbling and actually, you know, fumbling onto that side, the Lord does do things to bring you back on the correct side. Why? Because he don't want your lot to be their lot. That's why you just, just had to be glad when these things happen. So now you might want something and you ain't gay. <laughs> you might be sad that you ain't gay, but you know that the Lord knows best. You know? You know that the Lord knows best. All these things you just had to be mindful of. Because the Lord just keep you in check. Right? See, so yeah, on verse 12, it said, Delight not in the things that the ungodly have pleasure in, but remember they shall not go unpunished unto their graves. So they have destruction to face and then they have eternal shame to face and that is something you want nothing of you don't want nothing of either of them so you're supposed to be in check and for the time when you're stumbling the lord will keep you in check just like any parent whenever a child doing nonsense he's not going to ask you questions he's going to do what you have to do and you're going to get licks you know you're going and get some kind of restriction or ban you can't go anywhere some kind of punishment will take place for you to understand that that way you're doing is wrong don't do it and the lord is classes are what a father heavenly father i'll go back into the hebrews um yeah it says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So you see, sinners just get away with things. Not sinners in the sense that everybody just sin, but those who live how they feel like, they just get away with things that you, if you know you do it, you will gain some problems. You understand? You do the slightest thing, you walk down the road, you bounce your foot. In three weeks, your foot hurts in your fall. And they're doing worse than that not numbing to them. Why? Because the Lord wanna keep you in check. He's not trying to keep them in check. He has something else planned for them. But he wants you to check yourself. Right? He wants you to check yourself. Our gas scripture now after. 
that is um that's not slack yeah, let's find the scripture first to pray down can we just jump up my mind sometimes right 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 all these things to keep us in check right they say, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, right? Hebrews 12, 6. And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If he endure chastening, the most I deal it with you as with sons. So you're supposed to consider yourself special. That the Lord even paying attention to you. And actually trying to keep you from doing wrong things. Right? They say, furthermore, no, was A to say, but if ye be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So never nothing happening to you for doing wrong things, that is when you should actually worry. Okay, the Lord actually dealing with you when you're messing up, he will mess you up. You know, facts. It says, furthermore, verse 9, furthermore, we have had fathers of our, of our flesh, which, which, um, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. So uh, some people will tell themselves, well, you know, that parents actually know fit parents in the flesh, mother and father, and they keep them on track, they beat them when they're going off, and they, used to, they just give them reverence for that when they get big. Say, mommy, dad, I'm glad you used to do me this, because if I, if I didn't use together, I would not be how I is today. Right? And we gave, him, and we gave them reverence, Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Shall we not? Be none more right than the Lord. That's not my second. passing for away. You'll find out later, I'm sure. Or two. Right. The father of, of spirits and live. It says for for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. I never have parents like that. Have parents who punish you. And they didn't even punish you for doing something wrong. They punish you because there was vex or just because they had the power to do so. It had parents who do you that in the past. Sometimes all the times parents punish you in the past. It wasn't for righteous reasons. Sometimes there was vex, there was in a mood. Sometimes you just you just do the simplest things and you know they just punish you because they could. That is just how it has go sometimes. Right. After their own pleasure. But he for all profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. So that way the Lord does do all, us these things for our profit, for our gain, for our benefit. It's not, it's not just because he just likes to chastise us. Yes, and the Lord doesn't like to pray through hardship or pray yeah, through hardship's sake. All these things are to build you up, to prepare you, and all these different things for what are to come. Because the things that are going to come to this place, you understand, you will need the Lord to be with you. Because whoever the Lord is not with, you're not going to make it. See the first Corinthians. See the first Corinthians eleven verse I'll start from thirty one, right? First Corinthians eleven verse thirty one. It says, For if we would judge ourselves, it say we should not be judged. And not judging yourself, go back to work, examining yourself. Scripture talk about in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians um, 13. Examining yourself, whether you be in the faith. Making sure you check the way you're supposed to do, so that we would not have to receive judgment. And not even be judged by others. Because Scripture also say what? A spiritual man judges all things. He that is spiritual judges all things. But yet he himself is judge of no man. Why? Because a man who is not spiritual cannot give judgment on you. 
you could judge him by the scriptures, but he can't judge a matter of what you're doing is right or wrong because he don't understand the scriptures. Most people out here, when they get judgment, they just give it based on their personal likes or views, not according to righteousness, the Lord's righteousness. So a spiritual man could judge things, but he is judged of no man. You can't judge a spiritual man if you're not spiritual. You could try, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't be effective in the Lord's eyes. You understand? Because if you're not doing things according to the Lord's standard, then your judgment is not in His eyes. Or He's trying to, trying to do things according to the Lord's standards. Because we can't do it perfectly out here, but we try to do it according to the Lord's standards. Right? I'll read it over. It says, For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. Right? And you see, just say it in many different places. We are chastened of the Lord. So the Lord does what? Heavy affliction sometimes. Sometimes it is senior. It is senior local. <laughs> sometimes it is senior local. Honestly. Okay, now you have to deal with chastisement on the on the um, on the physical, but also on the spiritual with these spirits. Sometimes it is senior local. They say, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. So that is why the Lord has been doing these things. We will get our chastisement now so that when the time of condemnation comes to the world, we will be able to escape it. That is why you're supposed to take these things cheerfully. Scriptures say that. So take these things cheerfully. And the time coming where you will need all these things. All the faith that you was, all the faith that you was practicing, you will need, and all the, all the, all the grooming that you got from the Lord, will soon be put into effect. It will soon be put into effect. All the things you learn, all the pop quizzes you was doing, all the mock exams you was doing, a final exam coming where all those things will be put into effect. You will need them. You will need them. See, um, Ecclesiasticus 2, I'll start from 1. It says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. And this is we are cut for those people who just want to think to the self that whenever you come to the Lord, that automatically means that things will go your way and you'll get rich and you'll be bountiful and all this sort of rubbish. Scripture says, too, too much tribulation we shall enter into the kingdom. This is not about getting your way or having it nice all the time or none of these different things you understand? The men, even the men of the Lord when they was falling in what you tell them to do he said forsake all that they had so they was no rich men he was not a rich man and they was no rich men so we know that this is not about physical bountifulness scriptures say what lay up treasures in heaven where mutton don't rust or thieves don't break through and steal I'm not just paraphrasing Right, prepare thy soul for temptation. Verse 2. It says, Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. You have to deal with this as it goes. You understand? You have to endure to the end. He that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. We had to endure and have faith no matter what we go through. Have to endure. Right? It says, Constantly endure and make no haste in the time of trouble. Remain humble. Any time, of, any time of trouble come, remain humble and have faith. Don't make haste. <laughs> it's a cleave unto him and depart not away, which is something that a lot of men just do. As soon as hardship or tribulation come, they just come offended and they depart from the Lord. And we're supposed to what? Depart not away whenever, whenever hardship come. Right? Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased in thy last end. That can end up being a trial. It's not something that you wanna. Not, it's not something that you wanna fail. Because when you fail tests in school, you could always go and retake the tests. When you fail tests of the Lord, you never know which test is your last. You understand? So you're always supposed to try to keep, keep in that mindset. Right? They say whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. And that don't mean that, you know, whenever you're going through hardship, you know, your wife leave you, you lost your job, you know, you get some kind of sickness, you'll jump up and 
and throw a party. You know, it's not that kind of being cheerful, but be glad within yourself knowing that, you know, all these things will work together in the end for your benefit. Even though you might not see it at the point in time, you know, as scriptures say, what faith is the substance of, your, of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Even though you might not literally see it at that point in time, you, by faith you know in the end it, it, you know, it will work out to something good. Right? They say, what service is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art, thou art changed to a lower state. So the scriptures say, when thou art changed to a lower state, it would happen in some way at some point. These are things to prepare your mind for, and the scriptures tell you about it. So you know when you come into the truth, you're reading scriptures like this. And even when you're in the truth for a while, when you're going through hardship, when you're changed to a lower state, you know these are things that were written. These are things to look forward to. These are things that you know you can't avoid. Even if you, you want to tell yourself, like some of us tell yourself, when you come into the truth and you're going through hardship, I can't take this, I want to leave, you understand? I know what is hardship. You go and get even more hardship because you was in the truth and you depart. The scriptures talk about them that um, about them that lose patience. Their judgment will be even worse than the, than the other people. Once you come into this, you understand, it's not going back. It's a one-way door. A one-way door. You can't go in and come back out. No, it's a one-way door. Right? Right, you see, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. It's if a goal is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. And adversity goes back to hardship, trials, difficulties. These are things that you have to go through in this truth. You understand? And all these things is for the glory of the Lord. These are things that are written and these are things that we have to go through in some way at some point. Every brother own will vary pertaining to how much, how often, and how difficult. But you have to go through these things. You have to. That brother who have infirmities, that brother who, who, who have it hard financially, that brother who none of the family members want anything to do with them. Everybody had a different, you know, trials that they just go through when they come into the truth. But these are things that we have to go through. Why? Because it is written. And the Lord will determine who will get what. It said, believe in him and he will help thee. And that is one of the main things you're doing right now. You're believing in the Lord so that he will help you. And he, yeah, he will help thee. It said, ordain thy way aright and trust in him. It says, Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall. So anytime you start following the Lord, you understand? No matter what might happen, say, what you do, you deal with it. Just like with Job. Job was going through hell, but he still did what? He still, he still kept a whole fast his integrity. He stuck to what he was doing, and he didn't go aside. And eventually the Lord showed him mercy because the time of his tribulation it was eventually over. And it's just the same thing like us. It's the same thing like with Mashiach. When he was going through his, his trials and so forth, all his difficulties, it had time seat and used to depart from him for a past season. It doesn't last forever. Everybody will vary on it depending on how long it will last for, but it does not last forever. Everybody, everybody trial period have its time frame. Lord does decide how long and what and so forth. But whenever you're going through these things, and even when the time of destruction is coming, you're supposed to hold fast and depart not away unless what? Unless you fall. I'll read that part over. They say, Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good. No, verse 8, so that here. It is, yes, because 2 verse 8, they say, Ye that, ye that fear the Lord, believe him. No, verse 7. Salakia. Salakia. Verse 7. Right? Because 2 verse 7 is say, Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside, lest ye fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. Belief. Faith. 
which is something that is a, we know according to these scriptures are what a gift is a gift to the Lord to be able to have his faith in him to be able to call upon his name the name also is a gift all these things are gifts that were given to us these are tools that we have in the truth to stay on the right track you wouldn't go on a job site and have a hammer and take up a nail and pong a stone you have to use your tools right this nine I say ye that fear the Lord hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy and that's what you're waiting for right now the scriptures talk about the mercies of, of David we, 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 and as the house of David you understand we're looking for those mercies Slap you. as the house of David we're looking forward to those mercies because right now the times that we're in we don't even know we don't even know if he might be out there next week you understand if, if, um, if during the week this was to escalate and the, um, the hospitals become rampant the hospitals become rampant with cases of people that might lock the country down they might start to force vaccines on people we don't know we just we just seeing little glimpses of what is going on right now we don't know the steps the Lord going to take you understand we know the Lord putting things into the heart of the rulers but we don't know what those things are we have an idea through the scriptures but we don't know when you know or exactly what we just have ideas we don't know if next week we have to come out here there are certain states that are already under um, under lockdown those brothers are showing those states they can go out and preach we don't know if this might happen here and we will can't come out either all these things even lead into what things like the farming of the world very soon it's time to lock off i see um the brothers on the um, on the on the, um, on the page um yeah, was shy is coming back um they did a video and they say what push while they have time because we don't know when's the last time we're going to come out here or going to do a video any of these things to edify the people to do our work we don't know when is the last time our time right now is limited and at any point in time it could cut at any point in time it could cut but once you take us off the streets all you had to do is just lock the pages of of, of, um, of the internet and that's it famine simple all these things can be done in simple simple ways you understand simple simple ways right it's say on um, verse 10 right Ecclesiasticus 2 verse 10 it say look at the generations of old and see did did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded it say or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken or whom did he ever despise that called upon him no true wisdom we know that that, that referred to what his men the people that believed in him and so forth because they, they, were, they were people that did call on him and it didn't work out for them because they was not of him and in the time to come as the scriptures say in proverbs it will have some that will call on him and it would not work out for them you understand the lord have his few that any they're talking about is his is his group not just any that is his group you understand we know in that time the men of the lord will call upon him and he will hear them but the ones who wanted to live deliciously and do what they want in babylon you understand when they call upon him he will not answer as the scripture said they say for the lord verse that they say for the lord is full of compassion and mercy long suffering and very pitiful and forgive it and forgive it sins and save it in time of affliction and there are many scriptures that, could, that, that, that you could read you know that's comfort your spirit and build your feet that way scriptures talk about what um they say faith coming by hearing and by hearing by the word of the lord it's supposed to supposed to be going through the scriptures and building your feet when you're going through the scriptures, supposed to be building your faith. When you're seeing these prophecies, you're supposed to be building your faith. You understand? When you're doing your videos, being able to teach, um, edify the sheep, supposed to be building your faith. All these things are supposed to be trying to build your faith up because scriptures talk about the land being barren of feet. I'll bring out that scripture in a while. Scriptures talk about the land being barren of feet. Because there are many people who faith are weak, and in that time, they will lose faith and depart sins the, the, um, the righteous shall scarcely be saved 
KSC. You understand? The Aisha says, KSC be safe. So Ecclesiastes 2 verse 12. They say, woe be, woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goeth two ways. Right, the sinner that goeth two ways. You want to do good, you want to do bad. You want to you wanna be in the door and you want to be out the door. No, you have to pick a side. Scriptures talk about being, being hot or um, either you be hot or you be cold. You can't be lukewarm. You know, you're not in the middle. You, know, you can't be like, oh, can you see? I'm in between, but way more fresher. It's not like that. You gotta pick a side. You understand? You can't wanna say you're good and you wanna do bad at the same time. You can't wanna say you're bad and you wanna do good. You not know, say that bad people go do good sometimes and good people do do bad sometimes. You gotta pick a side. You can't wanna play a righteous. You understand? And you wanna and behind the scenes you wanna do your own thing. No. They say, verse 13, they say, War unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not. Right? For he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. All these things are things to take heed of. Don't be faint hearted because scriptures say, Well, without faith, it's impossible to please him. You can't be faint hearted in this truth. You gotta believe. And if you know your belief not strong, you still have time to work on that belief, to work on that faith, to strengthen yourself. And it's not just about having faith in anything, but to have faith in yourself, but to have faith in the Lord, how do you say to have faith? You can have many people have faith out there. People have faith in Caesar Borgia, they have faith in the, the hidden gods, but they have faith going and come to naught. So it's not just about just the concept of faith, but to have faith in the correct thing. People just get caught up with that. It's not just about having faith, but to have faith in the correct thing. Right? Say verse 14, you say, Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? So for the ones who lose patience in that time, who lose speed. Okay. Why are you on it so much? Right, for the ones who lose patience, who lose faith. When the Lord actually come and visit, what you'll do? Scriptures talk about that in um, nice in, in Revelation um, 25, talk about the virgins. The virgins who are um, who ran out of oil. You understand? They ran out of their feet. They had nothing, that they had nothing more to light the way. They went back into the world. I was doing whatever was pleasing to them according to according to the flesh and when the time come that the shot call what happened to them that when they already see it happen and the eyes the eyes was like oh shit it's happening they go you know they done lost it already they go, what do you what 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 tell them they tell them to go and buy oil i'm gonna read that one i'll read that first and i'll go to look after What's in Revelations 20? What's in Revelations? Revelations? It's Matthew. What's in Revelations? It's a lot here. I don't know what I was thinking Revelations. It's Matthew 25. I think that this is Revelations. It's a lot here. Matthew 25. I don't know why my mind was in Revelations. You'll see, Lord, though. Matthew 25, I'll start from 1, right? It said, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom, right? It say, and five were wise, and five of them were wise, and five were foolish. It say, they, it say they, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. You understand? And took no oil with them. They say, but the wise took oil in, in their vessels with their lamps. You understand? That oil, that oil is like what? Feet. You understand? That feet in, in the Lord. They say, um, they say um, verse 4. They say, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slum, they all slum, 
slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And that was a sudden cry. Like scriptures talk about um, like a thief in the night. They didn't have no warning of when he was coming. All these things going to happen in an instant. It say, it say, um, verse 7, it say, Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. You understand? They had no more feet. That, 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 that light, that lamp represents what? The light that lights the way. And that light represents what? Yahweh Shia Mashiach. You see, he is the light that is going out into the world. But they lose faith. They went back into the world. You understand? They no, more, they, they no longer had that light, that understanding, that faith. So they were lost. The scriptures say, what? Why they had the light? Walk in it. Let darkness come upon you. Just paraphrasing. Say for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not where the, where he go where he goes. And for those people who um for those virgins who didn't have any more oil, they had nothing to light the path. They didn't know where they was going. <laughs> they was lost. And they asking the others what? They say, um, they say then the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Lose feet, they no longer had that light. The understanding was gone from them. They say, but the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be none, not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Which they know very well. <laughs> you know, that was like just being sarcastic. <laughs> it was like being sarcastic. You know very well, you know, that is it. Like, that, and we are telling them, well, you handle the scene, you know, that is it for you. You do what you are to do. You understand? And we will do what we are to do. Because scripture is saying um, in Jeremiah, it says, such are for death for death, such are for the sword for the sword, such are for famine for famine. You know, that's paraphrasing. When that time comes, this, this is the time right now to actually prepare yourself for what is going to happen. When that time comes, preparation time done.